Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm so excited to be bringing you guys part two of my story mode analysis. This is um, my breakdown of all of what we've seen so far in the different trailers, the gameplay trailer, the story mode prologue trailer, and different glimpses of story mode that, we, that we've seen from the behind the scenes videos for Mortal Kombat 11. Um, if you didn't catch the first video, I encourage you to do so because I'm picking up right where I left off from the first video. In the first video, I kind of covered Kronika what she's doing in the story mode basically um, how she's jumping between Mortal Kombat 9 and 10 um, I also went into Raiden and discussed how he is now just causing an all-out assault against another room and he's just attacking everything and everyone in another room um, I brought up uh, Liu Kang and Katana um, the Revenants things like that um, and I, I lightly talked about the uh, the decisions options that's going to be taking place in the story mode I kind of talked tapped on that a little bit in the first video but in the second video here I'm going to expand upon that and talk about it a bit more okay so um, also guys I think I have found a way to record the videos without the audio sounding so crazy and jacked up um, I am actually using a headset and speaking into that so that seems to be taking care of a lot of the uh, in and out and uh, all the pops that that you could hear in the past video so hopefully um, in, these videos are coming across a bit cleaner and you can you guys can let me know in the comment section below what you think okay so let's go ahead and jump into the video so um, where I left off I left off with talking about decisions I was talking about the, the scene where Cassie is fighting Katana and um, in the last video I was talking about how that scene looked like a scene that you would see if you made a conscious decision or you chose to fight Katana versus choosing not to fight her. Um, so um, I was basically leaving everything on a note of basically saying that that scene in and of itself could be uh, an example of what you see if you make the option to choose to fight Katana. Um, so I think, I honestly think that scene with Cassie Cage is a scene where you actually have to make a decision whether you fight her or whether you don't fight her. Um, but uh, where I'm all right, so where I would like to pick this video up at is discussing the sequences with Young Liu Kang and Young Kung Lao. Um, now, I think these sequences are also examples of decisions being made because clearly there is a moment when Kronika confronts Liu Kang and she says, once again, Liu Kang, you've made, you've chosen the wrong destiny. So what, what we see happening with the Young Liu Kang and Young Kung Lao, I believe, are pretty much examples in the story mode where you're once again having to choose what you're going to do. Um, now, for some reason, they seem to be getting confronted by Scorpion, and I don't know exactly what Scorpion is doing in terms of like what his alignment is. Is he going to be working for Kronika? Will Krona have Will Kronika have gotten to him and have turned him for her side? Uh, but for whatever reason, it does seem like he's confronting them and he's trying to basically have some sort of combat or some sort of battle with them because when he shows up you know Liu Kang and Kung Lao don't seem too happy about it, it you know he's throwing out his spear and pretty much kind of announcing his presence that he's there and whatnot so um I'm but I, I am curious to see what the outcome and what's going on with Scorpion and why he's battling them um but yes yeah, so uh we so I believe these sequences are moments where you will be having to make decisions as the young Liu Kang and young Kung Lao and also, we also see Young Liu Kang and Young Kung Lao fighting Revenant Liu Kang and Revenant Kung Lao. And for all we know, those sequences might be set in motion if you choose to fight your older version or your future self. There might be a choice where you can choose to either agree with them or choose to work with them or choose to avoid them altogether. Um, but from what we see from the trailer, clearly the story mode is showing us a battle that's taking place. Um, Liu Kang is literally fighting himself in the past and then uh, Kung Lao is fighting himself in the past. So um, now, like I said, I'm just taking a guess. It, this might, the story mode might be set up to where you just have to battle them or fight them or whatever. But since decisions is playing a huge role, since your decisions are, are playing a huge role, then it might be optional. Uh, ch choosing to fight your Revenant self or Revenant Kung Lao, Revenant, Le Revenant Liu Kang could be a decision that you make and it will impact the future depending on whether you choose to battle them or not. So, but I'm just throwing that out there since we're, we are talking about decisions. So, 
Um, but another thing um, I wanted to talk about, just, just the whole decisions thing in general. Um, in the last video, I was talking about how we really don't know what Kronika's end result is. We know from the prologue that she seems to be favoring Shinnok, like she tells Shinnok that's not his destiny. So it does suggest that by her rewinding time, something I mentioned in the last video, she's going to be trying to create an alternate timeline to where Shinnok actually wins rather than loses. That seems to be the gist of what I get from her. But we ultimately, we really don't know what what her final result is. is she, does she really want Shinnok to win or is she just using him so that she can take over or whatever? We don't know. But um, the thing I want to talk about decisions is something that I hadn't thought about until I actually heard one of the developers mention this is the fact that when the campaign, I mean, when the story mode starts, it seems to be something that is set in motion from the beginning that you may be able to consciously make good decisions versus bad decisions, decisions that will help Kronika versus decisions that will harm her or resist her or lead to you battling her. Um, so that being said, it, it may be that even though she's the main villain of the game, depending on the decisions that you make, you might end up fighting someone else as the, as the villain <clears throat> or the main um, antagonist at the end of the timeline that you have chosen. So if you've chosen Kronika's side, then that would mean that at the end of the at the end of your timeline, you will probably end up finding yourself fighting um, Raiden, or you might end up end up see your, uh, having yourself fighting uh, members of the Earth Earth Realm forces or whatever. So that's something interesting to think about because uh, Kronika, even though she is the main villain, if you do have a, a choice or an option to uh to alter time or work with her or work against her or choose Raiden's side or do whatever that would mean that the ending the ending battle would be different depending on the decisions you chose you might find yourself on the side of Kronika fighting Raiden or you might find yourself on the side of Raiden fighting Kronika who knows um so it's uh, or it may it might go totally to the left in a way or in a uh, in a in, I can't even get it out. I'm just so confused. I think the whole idea of time, tr time travel, time crossing, time manipulation, it just has everybody just kind of in a tailwind of not of trying to figure out exactly what's going on. You know, that's how I started the last video. Just we still don't know exactly what's fully going on. But and the decisions, even though the decisions sound like a really cool idea, um, the fact that time is being manipulated and going back and forth, back and forth, I can't really see how making the decisions is going to, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm still trying to figure out whether it's a good thing or a bad thing. That's, I guess the, that's the gist of what I'm trying to say. It sounds like a good thing, but I'm really going to have to play it and actually see exactly all of my options. Um, and everything that that another room kind of lays out for the player to you know engage with and whatnot to see exactly what type of overall gameplay experience is going to have on me as a gamer so um, but you know for all for all it's worth I will definitely give them credit for creativity for coming up with something that is very innovative uh, time manipulation and being able to choose and make decisions all that does kind of factor into something that seems to be a very epic and uh, you know, um, kind of over the top, really, you know, exciting type of, you know, gameplay experience. But we, I really want to see if they can execute it well and kind of leave me feeling like, you know, it's going to be, it was really worth that $59.99 or however much I'm going to pay for this game. So um, the story mode for Injustice 2 was definitely worth it. I'll definitely say I was really upset that Mortal Kombat 10 wasn't on, the, on par with Injustice 2 in terms of story mode. So hopefully maybe Mortal Kombat 11 will fill in the void where Mortal Kombat 10 just kind of seemed to drop off. All right. Okay, guys. Um, see you guys next time. Astronaut out.